The T-34 is a Soviet medium tank introduced in 1940, famously deployed with the Red Army during World War II against Operation Barbarossa. Its 76.2mm tank gun was more powerful than its contemporaries, while its 60-degree sloped armor provided good protection against anti-tank weapons. The Christie suspension was inherited from the design of American J. Walter Christie's M-1928 tank, versions of which were sold turretless to the Red Army and documented as farm tractors after being rejected by the U.S. Army. The T-34 had a profound effect on the conflict on the Eastern Front in the Second World War and had a lasting impact on tank design. After the Germans encountered the tank in 1941, German General Paul Ludwig Ewald von Kleist called it the finest tank in the world, and Heinz Guderian affirmed the T-34 vast superiority over German tanks. Alfred Jodl, chief of operations staff of the German armed forces noted in his war diary, the surprise at this new and thus unknown wonder armament being unleashed against the German assault divisions. Although its armor and armament were surpassed later in the war, it has been described as the most influential tank design of the war. The T-34 was the mainstay of Soviet armored forces throughout the war. Its general specifications remained nearly unchanged until early 1944, when it received a firepower upgrade with the introduction of the greatly improved T-34-85 variant. Its production method was continuously refined and rationalized to meet the needs of the Eastern Front, making the T-34 quicker and cheaper to produce. The Soviets ultimately built over 80,000 T-34 of all variants, allowing steadily greater numbers to be fielded despite the loss of tens of thousands in combat against the German Wehrmacht. Replacing many light and medium tanks in Red Army service, it was the most produced tank of the war, as well as the second most produced tank of all time, after its successor, the T-54, T-55 series. With 44,900 loss during the war, it also suffered the most tank losses ever. Its development led directly to the T-44, then the T-54 and T-55 series of tanks, which in turn evolved into the later T-62, that formed the armored core of many modern armies. T-34 variants were widely exported after World War II, and as recently as 2010 more than 130 were still in service. In 1939, the most numerous Soviet tank models were the T-26 infantry tank and the BT series of fast tanks. The T-26 was slow-moving, designed to keep pace with infantry on the ground. The BT tanks were cavalry tanks, fast-moving and light, designed for maneuver warfare. Both were Soviet developments of foreign designs from the early 1930. The T-26 was based on the British Vickers six-ton, and the BT tanks were based on a design from American engineer Walter Christie. In 1937, the Red Army had assigned engineer Mikhail Koshkin to lead a new team to design a replacement for the BT tanks at the Kharkiv Comintern locomotive plant. The prototype tank, designated A-20, had a modified BA-20 engine and was specified with 20 mm of armor, a 45 mm gun, the production model used a Model V2, 34 engine, a less flammable diesel fuel in a V12 configuration designed by Konstantin Chelpin. It also had an 8x6 wheel convertible drive, similar to the BT tank's 8x2, which allowed it to run on wheels without Caterpillar tracks. This feature had greatly saved on maintenance and repair of the unreliable tank tracks of the early 1930 and allowed tanks to exceed 85 kilometers per hour on roads, but gave no advantage in combat, and its complexity made it difficult to maintain. By 1937 to 1938, track design had improved, and the designers considered it a waste of space, weight, and maintenance resources, despite the road speed advantage. The A-20 also incorporated previous research, BTIS and BTSW-2 projects, into sloped armor, its all-round sloped armor plates were more likely to deflect rounds than perpendicular armor. During the Battle of Lake Kassan in July 1938 and the Battles of Kalkin Gol in 1939, an undeclared border war with Japan on the frontier with occupied Manchuria, 
The Soviets deployed numerous tanks against the Imperial Japanese Army. Although the IJA Type 95 Hago light tanks had diesel engines, the Red Army's T-26 and BT tanks used petrol engines, which, while common in tank designs of the time, often burst into flames when hit by IJA tank killer teams using Molotov cocktails. Poor quality welds in the Soviet armor plates left small gaps between them and flaming petrol from the Molotov cocktails easily seeped into the fighting and engine compartment. Portions of the armor plating that had been assembled with rivets also proved to be the vulnerable. The Soviet tanks were also easily destroyed by the Japanese Type 95 tanks 37mm gunfire, despite the low velocity of that gun or at any other slightest provocation. The use of riveted armor led to a problem whereby the impact of enemy shells, even if they failed to disable the tank or kill the crew on their own, would cause the rivets to break off and become projectiles inside After the tank. After these battles, Koshkin convinced Soviet leader Joseph Stalin to let him develop a second prototype, a more heavily armed and armored universal tank that reflected the lessons learned and could replace both the T-26 and the BT tanks. Koshkin named the second prototype A-32 after its 32mm of frontal armor. It had an L-10 76.2mm gun and the same model V-234 diesel. Both were tested in field trials at Kubinka in 1939, with the heavier A-32 proving to be as mobile as the A-20. A still heavier version of the A-32, with 45mm of front armor, wider tracks, and a newer L-11, 76.2mm gun, was approved for production as the T-34. Koshkin chose the name after the year 1934, when he began to formulate his ideas about the new tank, and to commemorate that year's decree expanding the armored force and appointing Sergo Orzonikidze to head tank production. Valuable lessons from Lake Kassan and Kalkin Gol regarding armor protection, mobility, quality welding, and main guns were incorporated into the new T-34 tank, which represented a substantial improvement over the BT and T-26 tanks in all four areas. Koshkin's team completed two prototype T-34 in January 1940. In April and May, they underwent a grueling 2,000 kilometers drive from Kharkiv to Moscow for a demonstration for the Kremlin leaders to the Mannerheim Line in Finland and back to Kharkiv via Minsk and Kiev. Some drivetrain shortcomings were identified and corrected. Political pressure came from conservative elements in the army to redirect resources into building the older T-26 and BT tanks or to cancel T-34 production pending completion of the more advanced T-34M design. This pressure was brought to bear by the developer of the KV-1 tank, which was in competition with the T-34. Resistance from the military command and concerns about high production cost were finally overcome by anxieties about the poor performance of Soviet tanks in the Winter War in Finland and the effectiveness of German tanks during the Battle of France. The first production T-34S were completed in September 1940, completely replacing the production of the T-26, the BT series, and the multi-turreted T-28 medium tank at the Kharkov Panzer plant. Koshkin died of pneumonia, exacerbated by the drive from Kharkiv to Moscow at the end of that month, and the T-34 drivetrain developer, Alexander Morozov, was appointed chief designer. The T-34 posed new challenges for the Soviet industry. It had heavier armor than any medium tank produced to date, and there were problems with defective armor plates. Only company commander's tanks could be fitted with radios, originally the 71 TK-3 radio set. Due to their expense and short supply, the rest of the tank crews in each company signaled with flags. The L-11 gun did not live up to expectations, so the Grab and Design Bureau at Gorky Factory No. 92 designed the superior 76.2mm F-34 gun. No bureaucrat would approve production of the new gun, but Gorky and Kharkov Panzer started producing it anyway. Official permission came from the State Defense Committee only after troops praised the weapon's performance in combat against the Germans. Production of this first T-34 series, the Model 1940, totaled only about 400 before production was switched to the Model 1941 with the F-34 gun 9RS radio set also installed on the Su-100 and even thicker armor. 
The T-34 had well-sloped armor, a relatively powerful engine, and wide tracks. The initial T-34 version had a powerful 76.2mm gun, and is often called the T-34-76, originally a World War II German designation never used by the Red Army. In 1944, a second major version began production, the T-3485, with a larger 85mm gun intended to deal with newer German tanks.